uh, the innovations that we have been talking about during the whole afternoon. So you will discover different innovation this afternoon. Of course, you will discover the selected startup from the Future of Health grant. But before that, we would like to introduce you um, Iris Motoring. So they are doing, uh, they are doing, there are two, two co-founders actually, uh, not only one. They are going to tell us about their entrepreneurial journey, um, their successes, maybe their failures, and in any case, their challenges, if they found any business model in those, uh, in those domain. And yeah, all the challenges that they have faced in developing that uh, ring over the last five years to arrive at a finalized product uh, today. So welcome on stage. Antonio and Asim. Thank you. This is the microphone. Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Actually, matter of fact, today I'm accompanied by Asim Bukaima, my co-founder. We're actually the founders of Symbiosis, the company that has uh, conceived and commercialized uh, Iris Matrank. Let me go to the main motivation why actually we decided eventually to make a ring actually in this, in this business. The main motivation is you are you 24 seven. I mean, what does it mean? Today there is an increasing demand for devices that can enhance actually people's self-awareness that can really put people at the center of their focus under the big claim that, of course, preventing is better than curing, which is you know, the backbone also of medicine uh, 3.0. But in order for this to happen, there should be two pillars that are really fundamental. First of all is the capacity, the capability of, of measuring continuously people. Not only at night, of course, when the, the body reveals the most, but also during the day. For instance, you were actually addressing you know, like the mental stress and the mental actually uh, issues, which is also important to monitor during the day. And second pillar is the personalization, because you know, as a matter of fact, Mr. Mrs. Everyone doesn't exist yet. So it's very important that actually whatever device is capable of adapting to each specificity. So wearable devices are great devices in this regard, but in order to be really elevated to the rank of, you know, like life companion, they need to be comfortable and discreet. Now, you may wonder, but you know, like Apple Watch, for instance, I mean, Apple sold like more than 50 million units, but I mean, you may wonder, but I mean, can the smartwatch already, let's say, answer, address this, this challenge? Let's say the answer is partially or not really. And the reason is, first of all, I mean, sleep is a very important, actually, item when it comes to improving self-awareness. And smartwatches are not the best companion when it comes to sleep, as a majority of, actually, a lot of people, they do remove watches, or simply they keep the watches under charge, actually, for night, because you don't have enough autonomy. And the second point comes from, you know, the signs. When it comes to, uh, let's say, extracting vital signs from the body, not all the locations are the same. And let's say the finger, for instance, is a much better place than the wrist. So uh, this means that smart rings, they're really good devices. But in order this to really uh, happen and to be really effective in this business, they must be comfortable really for a continuous usage. Before we, we deeper dive into our technology and what is unique, I, let's recall everyone actually how, for instance, again, an Apple Watch is tracking your sleep or your heart rate. It's by the means of the PPG technology. If you have an Apple Watch, you see the Apple Watch shining some green light on the back. That's a PPG at work. It works in a very simple way. You have an LED that shines light through the tissue. Uh, actually, a very small fraction of these lights gets reflected and sensed by a photodetector, and that's the PPG signal that builds up, which is modulated by the heart activity. The way it usually, uh, this is done in, in, let's say, in conventional state-of-the-art devices, including the Apple Watch, is by using discrete electronics. So you use a discrete photodiode, you combine with a discrete analog front ends, and you eventually end up with PPG modules which are quite cumbersome, which are perhaps excellent, let's say, for the wrist, but not necessarily the best for some emerging devices like rings or hearables. The way we do it is a completely different change you know, in the technological paradigm. We use CIS technology, so we bring all these discrete electronics in one monolithic chip. 
which means you know, miniaturization, which is great in semiconductor. And on the other hand, taking advantage of the sensitivity of CMOS image sensor, which is the technological brick in the camera of your phone, for instance, you can reduce a lot of power consumption. So you have two things, which is miniaturization insights, reduction in power consumption, which are great tools for building better and better wearable devices. And as a matter of fact, our ring devices is so small because it takes advantage of this. I mean, if you consume little, then you can integrate low, smaller, smaller batteries, eventually ending up with, let's say, footprints which are particularly advantageous in this business. This is actually Iris, Iris Ring, actually our device, uh, which is actually the first next generation smart ring, and we'll be actually uh, explaining why which is a much sleeker device than what you can find on the market and can be used for monitoring much more than just the heart rate and heart rate variability. For instance, we've done studies on the extraction of blood pressure of the PPG or, for instance, actually the fertility monitoring for the women population. Now, um, on one side, you have a much smaller device, so you may think that since it gets smaller, so there is less space for electronics, but as a matter of fact, it doesn't work like this, because it is smaller, but as a matter of fact, it integrates more electronics. We have a constellation of our proprietary modules, so you can see PPG modules all around the ring, and this comes with a lot of advantages. First of all, one of the issues of rings is that they usually rotate, and this makes it uh, particularly challenging for the device to find a good spot where capturing the data. Then um, you have seen, actually we have seen, I mean, I have explained that, you know, PPG is about making light uh, propagate in the skin. It's all about creating optical path, for, let's say, for capturing these photons. So the constellation basically allows the device to adapt to everyone. And that's actually the personalization item that I was bringing up at the beginning. So the capability of the ring to understand what is the, uh, your specificity and what is the, the path that allows getting the best signals. And, and this means exactly getting better signal, but also reducing the power budget at which these signals are basically uh, gotten. And last but not the least, this constellation allows switching from reflective to transmissive. I mean, sadly, during COVID, we've been using, actually, we've been using a lot of this, you know, this finger clip for oxygen, which is using transmissive PPG. And this device can be used also in this regard. Now, I would like to show you quickly, let's say, uh, the market of the, of the ring, which we are not the only ones. This is a business which is dominated by URA, the Finnish company. And there are actually quite some newcomers, like Circular, Movan, Ultraman, and Rincon. But apart from the names, what I would like to stress your attention is that, I mean, in this actual slide, you have URA, and you have basically copies of URA that you can see that the ring sections, uh, which is a very important, actually, uh, feature, is basically either bigger or as large as Hura. And this is a challenge, particularly, you know, like for the women populations, because actually in terms of business model, you know, like the women are very good actually, because they take actually their own health more seriously than, let's say, the men. I mean, that's a reality. And, and of course, if you build a device which is so cumbersome, of course, that's a, let's say, limiting factor for a widespread adoption of these devices. And this is just tells you, I mean, I'm wearing also the, the iris ring, how the iris ring is small with respect to the URA, which is an, almost as tiny as a wedding ring. And I would like to conclude my part before screening handing to my uh, colleague Asim with, let's say, some outlook about this business. Why we do believe this business is actually so interesting actually to look at. And mostly from two reasons. First of all, if you look, I mean, in the, in, in the US, this is actually from 2020, but didn't change that much. The population, the percentage of population that do not really wear a fitness trackers is extremely high. Four out of US all do not wear any fitness trackers. This independently of income, age, ethnicity, whatever. Um, and of course, you may wonder that maybe these people, they simply can, don't like wearable devices, but our argument is, of course, if you actually propose them something which is like, which is comfort, that provides good data, for sure you, you will be actually managing to access more and more of these people. And the second actually possibility is coming from the wrist devices. The wrist devices, the majority of devices are the Apple Watch-like devices, but there are a lot of wristbands that are also actually important in the business, and you may 
conceptually think of a wristband without a screen, almost like a ring for the wrist. And for sure, there, is, there are actually uh, migration possibility, which is, which is coming from this large uh, wristband, let's say, uh, segment. Please, Asim. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nino. Yeah, so now, if we have a ring uh, that is sleek, comfortable, easy to wear on a 24-7 basis, this must be paired with an application that is also at the same level. An application that can not only help people with uh, self-awareness, uh, but also uh, bring them to actionable steps in order to take control of their health and get better. And on this, we would like to, to, to start with the following axes, which are sleep, relaxation, activity, and also nutrition. How can we achieve this? So the standard today into uh, whatever you have applications that monitor or help uh, users to, to, to in this uh, scope of wellness, you have uh, what is called today a score, or readiness score, or different types of scores, but they are given on a, on, a, on a daily basis, one point, and generally after sleep, after analyzing maybe only the quality of the sleep or combining the quality of the sleep with what happened the day before. Uh, we would like to, 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 to bring here something a little bit more, which means uh, a companion that can help throughout the day, to bring the balance throughout the day. And here we can have an example of how this could work. Uh, you wake up in the morning, then you plan your day based on the quality of sleep, the quality of regeneration that your body could get and achieve during the night. And then you would go through your, your, your day, depending on, on the kind of energy with which you started. And then uh, somewhere maybe uh, at noon, you would be uh, invited to, uh, to, to track or to uh, balance between uh, you, the state from which you, st you started, your level of energy and, uh, and your activity, and the kind of mental stress that you had to withstand during your workday, for example. Before bedtime, the, the application would uh, help you again uh, uh, catch up on your day if your day was is missing physical activity or is missing rather relaxation depending on the kind of day that you had and preparing you to wind down and to go to bed and let your body do the rest which means regenerating and let the application analyze the quality and uh, of, of your sleep uh, we believe that such an approach can help uh, people improve their quality of life, which would come with uh, plenty of benefits. Now, uh, I would like to highlight also some two key benefits, I mean, specifically. Uh, one can be measured or can be achieved thanks to high precision temperature monitoring at night, and this is for a uh, female population, and it's for fertility tracking or for cycle tracking in general, because today we have uh, uh, infrared sensors that could sense temperature when the body thermalizes well, especially during the night and during sleep, in a way that we can track the variations of temperature that are in the 0.2 digits of, uh, of a degree Celsius. And this helps into tracking quite precisely whether uh, fertility or whether the cycle. Another, in addition to other applications, of course, when we get sick, uh, we would know it uh, a little bit before uh, things get, uh, get, get worse. And on another uh, uh, plan, we have also uh, a strong focus on blood pressure. This is at research and development point. And we have uh, conducted uh, clinical trials at this level. We believe into, uh, uh, into the fact that prevention is key in this, in, for cardiovascular diseases, and especially for, blood, uh, for, for hypertension. So we have an algorithm that can track uh, quite precisely the changes of, of blood pressure. We do not have to provide people with absolute values. What we need is a trend, whether you're on a, a, a hypertensive trend or not, and get an alarm on that. But absolute value would require medical certification, which would delay this for a couple of years, and this is not the kind of vision that we have here, and also maybe not the objective of uh, Health 3.0. Uh, on, the, on the blood pressure, indeed, we have performed a, a, a clinical study that proves that uh, PPG, photoplatysmography waveforms, can lead to a very good correlation with the help of, uh, of, of algorithms, a very good correlation with the blood pressure that, was, that is measured in the aorta. So the, our, the object of our clinical study that was published in, in, in a couple of journals uh, was to uh, equip or to make the patients wear uh, our rings 
during the uh, uh, coronography, which means while the, the surgeon is placing a stint in uh, the arteries of the heart, and then at the same time measuring the pressure, pr uh, blood pressure at the level of the aorta. And uh, so the results were very, very uh, uh, promising uh, into the direction of the fact that we can use uh, uh, these wearable devices to, try, to track uh, hypertension and maybe prevent uh, uh, hypertension for people who, have, uh, who are not yet diagnosed with hypertension. Now, uh, the organizers asked us to, 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 to talk a little bit about uh, the, the story, how we got there, uh, especially for the benefit of uh, maybe the, the, the young among us or the ones who are uh, students or researchers with the aim of, uh, of going through a, a, a entrepreneurship experience. So uh, here we tell a little bit, the, some, we give some flashbacks on, on, the, on the story. So, we started around 2018. We were, both of us, scientists at, uh, at IPFL. We were working on uh, uh, CMOS image sensors and biomedical sensors. So we, we made a marriage. So we, we developed a first-of-a-kind sensor for, uh, for, for photoplatismography, as Nino mentioned before, which is different than off-the-shelf components that you have today. And um, this, uh, the, 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 I mean, the success of this work scientifically, it was accepted at ISCCC, that was the, 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 the reference conference, uh, and still the reference co conference in semiconductor industry, uh, helped us uh, secure our, our, our pre-seed round. Actually, we had the idea in mind clear. We, want, we didn't want to do research just to stay in the lab and publish papers. We wanted to do it to bring impact, to bring it to the market on our own. And that, that's what happened uh, very early. So uh, we incorporated the company before even, you know, I mean, he was in his second year of PhD. And in 2019, uh, we, we, we presented our work at ISCCC, brought interest, and with the money we got for, from the incorporation of the company, we started building things that we could not do uh, at university, that we could not do here in, 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 in the labs of, uh, of EPFL, which is building more sophisticated, more miniaturized modules. So we built our first two chips, combining everything, all what you see on the first picture, all around was all brought to this chip, and then put in an even smaller chip, four times smaller chip, and put in a module. And that was our first demonstrator, just to show that this technology can get very miniaturized, very comfortable to be used for wearables, uh, apart from uh, the, 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 the wristband or the, the, the smartwatch, but rather go in the ear or go on, 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 on a ring. And then we wanted to uh, demonstrate uh, that this technology is uh, a good fit and is precise on a very strong use case. And this very strong use case was the hypertension or b uh, blood pressure, as we showed before. And then we went to conduct our clinical study. We had to do the, all the, the, the you know, Swiss ethic, medic, uh, and everything on our own. It, it was really like a, a lot of hard work because we didn't have, as, as a young startup, the means to conduct such a... I mean, you know, with all what it requires to go through a, medic, a clinical trial. But we could do, go through that. And then, once proving that the technology was very good on a strong case, our next step was to build, uh, uh, to, 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 to build readiness of our product for mass uh, production. And that's where, in 2021, we uh, could uh, start manufacturing and testing our chips uh, in a large volume uh, fashion, which means building full wafers, full masks on our own, and then each wafer with more than 16,000 chips, and then testing all of this, building the test setup, the environment, getting to know all of this world, the logistics that comes with it, and all of it. So after that, we could incorporate those new chips that we called SP140 into the smallest, which is today the smallest PPG module on the market, with which we would like to, to, to unlock applications that, that, that have not been unlocked before, which means measuring heart rate and heart rate activity or hypertension, or, uh, blood pressure, sorry, inside the air canal, uh, the, uh, for instance, and this could be today possible with modules, uh, PPG modules like this. And then while we were on the process of building uh, design references or building devices for clinical studies, like you can see above, like the ring, and how it, it was evoluting uh, with our different sensor technology, I mean, until becoming the very small uh, iris ring one there, we, we said at a certain point, okay, today uh, in our lab, we have something that is smaller than any other smart ring on the market, that has more sensors than any other smart ring on the market, and that has a signal clean enough to do even, to measure even blood pressure. And a battery, which is 
I mean, consume so little that the battery is five times smaller than an, an Ura ring battery to, uh, today. So we said th this is something that maybe we should not just try to, to sell in a B2B mod, mod, uh, model. We have to try to go B2C with this. So we have to prove now uh, a business case. So what we had to do, what we did, is that we went to uh, crowdfunding. And it was like a nice opportunity for us to, to learn this new world and also to, to, to study the, 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 the market in a practical way, which means uh, uh, presenting a product, convince, doing marketing, convincing people about it, and then getting pre-orders from people. And today, uh, we managed to get in a few months more than $1.5 million of pre-orders, and uh, today we are fully dedicated uh, to, 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 to uh, raise more funds for the company so that we can tackle this challenge of the B2C and deliver all, I mean, these 10 pre-ordered uh, uh, rings and start uh, um, making the company ready to spread those smart rings uh, on a wide basis and, uh, and, and, and contribute into uh, prevention and maybe one day into health 3.0. So uh, this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, we thank you both for uh, inviting us uh, today again and thank you for your attention. Nassim for, for the presentation, thank you so much. Now let's dive uh, into the last year's program and the Future of Health grant, the startup that we have selected last year for the first edition of the grant. And for this presentation, I, I would like to welcome uh, again Nicola on stage uh, for, uh, to present you what has been done during this year and what's the plan, and the clicker should be here. I and guess. the clicker is somewhere. Yeah. It's here, okay, yeah, so. Thank you, Johannes. Um, yeah, let's, uh, we, we are celebrating the, the first year anniversary of this, of this program, so it's time to, to look a lit, little bit uh, back about what we have done, in the, what happens in the, the last 12 months. And, uh, but for first and, uh, and foremost, what I would like to, to, to re-explain a little bit for those who were not with us last year is what is making this program unique. There is something so very special in this program. Um, we don't make much noise on the social networks, but we do work. So that's the kind of thing. So the first thing is that we have an excellent uh, sourcing and coaching partner, which is the EPFL Innovation Program. Park, um, they, they help us to find uh, the right uh, startups for, for, for the program, and then they, uh, they, they have the experience more than us at CSS in managing the, um, the, the, the startups, talking to the startups, and, uh, and, and giving them the, the pace of what I will explain in the next slide later. So thank you for, for EPF Innovation Park for, for this uh, excellent work. Um, then we uh, have, what we have done over the last month is to uh, gather around us people who really want to change the things uh, in terms of Medicine 3.0 and innovation. So all the mentors that, uh, that are part of the program, they dedicate uh, time and effort uh, to the startups. I will, I will uh, describe that in a little bit. But a very unique uh, part of this uh, program is what we call the CXO as a service. And you just replace the X by uh, F, like CFO, uh, CMO, CPO. So it's the chief financial officer as a service. So what, is, what does it mean? It means that by definition, the early stage startups, they are very incomplete. And as we have seen with uh, Nino and Asim, they are made of uh, researchers initially. Of course, they are not only at this stage uh, now, but typically when they start their startup, they are just um, two or one or three uh, researchers, and they definitely lack the complementary uh, resources that could go into the financing, into the marketing, into uh, 
strategy and all these, these elements. And we supply them with these uh, skills uh, thanks to a specific partners, so we have individuals, some of them are in the room here, um, they, they spend time with, with the startups, they don't advise the startup, but they really work with the startup, as if they were part of the team, they de dedicate time for building things that are missing to the startups of the future of health grant. And we have some, 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 some small companies because the objective also is to help um, uh, companies which are in the ecosystem of Romandi here. So for instance, APIC, which is um, uh, a company specialized in developing in um, um, application, mo mobile applications, or working on, on interface or data science and these kind of things. Uh, there is uh, FXIS, and I think Elliot is uh, somewhere here. Um, e e FXIS is a company, a small company here in Lausanne as well, specialized in data science. So if one day one of our startup needs to think or develop something which is out of their scope, speci especially in the data science, we can call FXIS and the FXs can, can help them. And we have uh, lawyers as well, like uh, um, Maître Guilleron, I think he is here, uh, I saw him, but I don't, yeah, maybe not. Um, he's, he's a famous uh, legal uh, company uh, specialized in uh, digital and data, so they, they, they are the best person on the... In, in the Lausanne area for advising in this domain. So this is all the, the kind of uh, services that we, we, we provide as human capital to the, to the, to the service, uh, to the startups. And all this is, is coming with a grant, uh, depending on the, the level of, of the companies. So level one is receiving 10K, the level two 30K, and the other one, and the level three is 50K. It's not a lot of money, but it's a good school to learn, to, to do things with little money, uh, believe me. So that's, um, that's something which is important. So I want to, to give, to, to say a special thanks for, for the startups that join one by one uh, in the last 12 months uh, the program. Um, they really dedicated a lot of time for supporting the, the, the startups. They talk with their own experience of the, the industry. So Pfizer is talking about what is going on in terms of uh, uh, digital replacements of drugs around the world and it's very valuable for most of the, for the startups. Um, there are people like uh, Microsoft who can definitely talk about the IT architecture for startups, and, and so on, and, and so on. The latest uh, joining the program is Unisante. Unfortunately, Semira uh, is not uh, here in the room. She was supposed to, to be here, but uh, she has the COVID, and she's protecting us <laughs> from the COVID. Thank you, Semira. Um, so, and Unisante is, is super important for us as, as, a, as a center for, for medic general medicine and public health. It's a, it's a key addition to our ecosystem. Um, what, what is the methodology? The methodology is making the program itself also quite uh, unique. Uh, we we, we start with, uh, with, with definition of the objective. So that uh, is starting for next week with all the startup that will be selected uh, and that will be announced in a few minutes. We, we define in one week, we define the objective for each of the startups. And quickly we uh, split into milestones. What are the necessary milestones to reach the, 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 the objectives? And in the following weeks, we assigned the the, 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 the Source, uh, the resources which are necessary to reach these milestones. So once again, they could, they could be human people, they could be meeting with the coaches, meeting with the mentors, it could be a meeting with a special company who is developing this and that. That's the, 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 the resource allocation. And we are pretty coercive in what we do, um, and it seems that the startup uh, like it. So we make uh, weekly reviews for each of the startups. Um, we uh, talk to them, what have you done last week, what do you do next week, uh, what are your problems, and we are more interested in the problems, so that we uh, systematically try to find a solution for them to go quickly into uh, uh, reaching their milestones. And at the end, the objective is to, to get this, uh, this, this achievement. We, we are not a conventional uh, program, but we, we, we 
we have some workshops, so it's quite necessary from time to time not to do some customized uh, assistance, but also to, to mutualize a little bit. And um, we partner with, uh, with McKinsey for, uh, as, as a knowledge partner for running uh, a series of premium workshops. Uh, two were uh, run uh, this, this year, so there was the consumerization of health. So what, is the, the, what does it mean that uh, health is becoming a product in itself? So it's impacting most of the startups in the, in the market. And the second one that we, that we run was on the reimbursement. Reimbursement is key, we have seen that in the discussion panel, is uh, defining the business model of each of, of the startups. And when you get reimbursed, at the startup, you can be sure that your, your business model is, um, is working, but it's quite difficult in Switzerland, but there are some tricks and this is what they learned during the, 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 this, uh, this workshop. And then uh, we try to be smart, so we mutualize uh, the, the workshops with another program from EPFL Innovation Part, Tech Forever. Uh, and we have run three, uh, three workshops uh, over, the, over the last month. And uh, what is super important for us is to bring the startup to CSS so that they can talk to real people from CSS, uh, start discussing uh, business. And we, organize, uh, we try to organize once a year the Innovation Day um, within uh, CSS or with CSS people so that they really can meet with people from the health and insurance uh, business. So, uh, last year we, uh, we accelerated or supported uh, 16 startups in, in year one that you, you see their logo here. Um, what, what, what is more important is what did they achieve over, the, over, the, um, over this year. So uh, we, we, we just tried to summarize and to make it short all the benefits, but let me take a few of them. So this is the, for the, the September 2000, uh, um, 2022 batch, so we have two batches per year, and the, this is the first batch. Okumeda, for instance, um, a company who is doing in uh, ophthalmologic um, uh, prevention, they uh, distributed in, in more than 100 stores in, in the DAR region, and they, they started to, to, to deploy in, in Switzerland. And as I said before, they uh, started to get the reimbursement of CSS, which is very critical for them, because it means that um, their business model in Switzerland is pretty clear. Uh, so that's making a very big difference. It's not, it's not, it's not arriving last day, uh, next day. It's something that has been to be worked with the, the CSS teams. It's taking time. Um, yeah, and uh, some, some of the examples, for instance, uh, Genomi was, uh, developed their second product uh, fo focusing on, on, on stress. Um, yeah, some startups who were much more earlier in their development, like Vitalize DX, uh, they, they could finalize their marketing uh, graphics. Uh, we have Nuria, who received the, the Rosenfield Prize, which is a prize uh, which is distributed to startups associated to, to the EPFL, uh, if I'm EPFL Innovation Park, maybe, um, and, and so on. Same thing with the, the second batch. Uh, February 2023, so um, most of them, all of them uh, have benefited from, from different things. Uh, and this is what we, we work systematically with, with the startups. It's uh, defining some of the milestones and, and being proud at the end that we reach uh, these this milestones together. Finally, uh, what is the what is the uh, the satisfaction of the startups? It's uh, we need to consider that. So uh, we run a, a, a survey um, in July. So it was not totally finished. The program is finishing end of August, but we're close to the end. And uh, the satisfaction level from the startup is 8.9 something, um, which is good. Honestly, I could have said nine, but I want to leave some room for improvement for next year. Uh, it's, it's pretty good for, for, for a program to be uh, 8.9, honestly. And 100% of the startups say that they would recommend the program. It's not a waste, it's not a waste of time. And that um, they want to be part of the alumni group that we will create uh, 
one day, but it's starting with something that we are launching today, um, and this is called Le Club. So Le Club, some of you have been uh, have heard of that. Uh, Le Club is um, is an exclusive business club for start mature startups, uh, not only coming from the future of first grant, but the, the one that have achieved the level three with us go systematically to Le Club. And the club is, is really focused on, uh, on, on business. So we really want to, uh, and this is why I asked the question to the panel before, uh, would you integrate some startup in your, in your pilots? We want the startup to go and to join the, the pilots on the real market. So it's business focused. Um, we want to be very flat in organization with, with monthly gatherings. So people explain what do they need to crack the Swiss market, what is, what is missing. And then there is a network effect between uh, the startups, but also the partners who are joining this, uh, this program. Uh, we want to help them to assist them in founding so that they, 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 they can fund themselves. And uh, we want to bring them vi vi uh, visibility in Switzerland. It's, of course, much more uh, easy to go to the SHUV or some hospitals with CSS than just as a startup alone. And uh, finally, uh, yes, we trust the ecosystem uh, effect that uh, is necessary, that is usually coming from this kind of, uh, of club. Thank you. That was a, a wrap up about what happened in the last uh, 12 months. <laughs> Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, okay, so now we've been to the, uh, to the end of the event with the selected startups, so it's the time we've been waiting for. So the selected startups for the next cohort are the following. So for the level one, we have Alliance Allergy, Novo Vitae, Clear Sky, Seneca Project, Quant Actions. For the level two, we have Tune Insight, Neuria Digital Therapeutics, Minerva, and for the level three, we have ILA. So I think before hearing the pitches, I think they deserve a big round of applause. Thank you. So now I think it's better if you can really see and understand what, uh, what's behind these names. So, um, so yeah, we are, they are invited to pitch. It will be two minutes for each of the startups. Uh, after that, you will be cut, stopped. And the first startup to present is Alliance Allergy, and they provide e-health solutions that enables uh, health professionals to protect patients from drug allergies. So Alliance Allergy, where are they? Okay, perfect. The floor is yours. Hi, everyone. I'm Daniel Alali. I'm allergologist. I'm then the CEO of Alliance Allergy. Hello everyone, I'm Haik Nikolian. I'm a physician specialized in allergies and I'm uh, working with the startup. Our innovation was inspired by a tragic real life story about a young woman allergic to penicillin who died after receiving a penicillin related antibiotics. This could have been prevented clearly. We highlight the significant knowledge gap among healthcare professionals regarding cross drug allergies. Drug allergy is a major health problem affecting uh, approximately a billion of people around the world. And the, the waiting time to see an allergologist is too long, leaving the patient at risk to be re-exposed to an offended drug. Currently, there is no solution for the management of crossed drug allergies. But we have a solution. It's called Allergix. This is our product. So what is it? Uh, Allergics is a web app uh, designed to help healthcare professionals to safely prescribe drugs for their patients, their allergic patients. Now, it is based on the most updated data uh, available in the scientific literature on the topic of uh, drug allergies. How does it work? The professional, the physician, will enter the uh, allergy of his patients, the symptoms, and then we'll get a clear recommendation about the drugs he should avoid to avoid the risk of cross-reacting allergies. 
Now, um, this is uh, based on, uh, on a huge database of more than 11,000 drugs available on the Swiss market. And with this step, we intend to bridge the gap that, uh, uh, that uh, allows, uh, the, that protects the patient until he gets to an allergist. And uh, we target a uh, base consu of consumers of for more than 46,000 healthcare professionals in Switzerland, including institutions and softwares, medical softwares. In conclusion, Allergic is our innovation set to revolutionize the management of drug allergies, enhancing patient safety and, redux and reducing health costs. Thank you for allowing us to be here today and to leave uh, of our project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is Novo Vite, a startup that has developed a mental health platform focusing on long COVID patients. Thank you very much. So, hello everyone. We are Novo Vita, new life, new beginnings. The problem we are addressing here is that over 257 million people worldwide are suffering from long COVID with recovery cycles starting at three months, lasting to 24 months. Some never actually recover. Long COVID also often comes with diseases like stress, burnout, depression, to mention a few, and we can help with them too with the platform. Our solution is a mental health and longevity platform where we empower patients with the right preventive recommendations, treatments, and coaching. Um, in short, we help patients suffering from long COVID and other stress-related diseases to recover faster and stay healthy, prevent. So we're a team, and today you see two of us. We're a team of patients, coaches, doctors, designers, and serial entrepreneurs. Um, this is my co-founder and also my wife. Hello, I'm Sandra. I'm an HR professional and coach, and I help people with long-term absences get back to work. She does a great job. And I'm Anders. I'm a long-term, uh, I'm a COVID patient. I spent the last 18 months battling various signs of that. Not very easy. All I can say is that if I knew what I know now, I could have caught months of my recovery, and that's the goal of the platform. So, it's this knowledge that we want to build upon. I saw over 15 doctors, I had multiple scans, very expensive stuff, it took way too long, and we want to, I went through all the stages of feeling alone, hopeless, getting sent around, to finally finding the solution that accelerated the recovery. And it's this knowledge we want to build upon and democratize access to with technology. Our solution um, works for patients and healthcare professionals, but also for health insurers and for companies B2B white label. And last but not least, I'd like to say thank you to everyone here today. We're super excited to be here. And also a small call to action to Philomena, Sean Daniel, Diego, Dr. Shala, Nicola. Great panel. We really enjoyed it. We can do a lot in prevention, and Diego, we have a business model. So let's work together. Thank you. The next one is Clear Sky for the level one, so the, the early stage startups selected. Do you prefer? Hi, everyone. Try to remember your last medical consultation with your doctor. Usually, the practitioner invites you into the room, and then he sits in front of the computer to start typing notes as you try here to describe your health issue. Doctors usually, they don't like to, but they have to feed your electronic health record for tracking and follow up on your case. And it drives sometimes some of them to quit their job, especially in the hospital domain, all this administrative burden. At ClearSky, we have built the smartest AI microphone 
which allows to process this conversation with the patient on the fly and totally hands-free for the practitioner. And this up to the clinical ICD code for the insurances. It allows, one, the patient to have the doctor full attention, two, the practitioner to focus on his job, basically medicine instead of admin, and three, the healthcare institution to generate structured, actionable, and compliant data out of this consultation. And this thanks to our language model on the device. Of course, you don't want us as a company to have a view on your sensitive conversation with your doctor. And actually, we don't have access to it. Even though we bring state-of-the-art AI on the table, the intelligence is actually embedded on the device itself. It's called Edge AI. So we collect and process the data within the walls of the medical room. I'm Hugo Flaya, co-founder and CEO of ClearSky, and we built the first AI system that keeps data inside the room. Thank you very much. Thank you, and next up is Zeneca. Thank you. Um, maybe before I start, I would like to thank uh, CSS and APFL for supporting us and enabling innovation with Seneca. Um, who of uh, you has a family member who needs home care? Maybe, can you raise your hands? Some of you, what is the experience you have made? Was it good, bad, not so good? Yeah, I see some mixed signals and actually that is also the experience I did as a family member when our grandmother needed home care and that has led to um, the foundation of Seneca, Seneca Care. Because that experience is pretty generic today in the Swiss market of home care. Uh, what we see is that the demand for home care is growing up, so more patients needing care while the supply for care, the nurses, is decreasing. A lot of nurses leaving their jobs, and that means costs go up, as we have seen in the presentation earlier, and quality goes down. With Seneca, we want to address that problem by a model which includes, first, offering nurses an attractive work model, allowing them to work self-organized, entrepreneurial, while being employed. What they do is they deliver care quality. That means they focus on outcomes by including, involving family members into the care process, systematically and goal-oriented. And in order to al allow them to do that, what we did is we developed our own digital solution which again allows the nurses to manage the whole care process in a way that is more simple, efficient, and also again focused on the outcome. And the, the fourth pillar is what we cannot digitize, the administrative work. We provide that as a service to the nurses out of our back office. We, are, we focus on mental health. We are licensed in three cantons today, in Bern, Zurich, and Zug, and first nurses are generating first revenue. The outlook is that we want to involve family members into the care so that they can also get reimbursed for the care, and furthermore, we want to offer our digital solution to other nurses who are freelancers or other care companies. Thank you. Thank you. The next startup is Contaction. Uh, it's a mental health startup that detects subtle, subtle uh, cognitive change objectively and continu continuously and with a high scalability. Fortunately, they are not here today, so they send us uh, a message. I am Martin Hahn, CEO of Quant Actions. We are a neuroscience venture and spin off from the University of Zurich. Mental health is a large problem. Chronic stress and burnout are on the rise, but existing digital solutions for mental health are only scratching the surface because they cannot yet solve a fundamental challenge, how to reach 
each of their users when they need help. Because for that, they would need to know how their users are doing. But self-reporting is unreliable and inaccurate. This is where we come in. Our AI-driven solution assesses the cognitive fitness of smartphone users. Cognitive fitness is an important health indicator and a symptom of many mental or health issues like chronic stress. Our solution provides the user with daily scores and trends. This shows them the impact of their lifestyle choices. Does yoga benefit me or daily running? So how does it work? Our system passively generates these insights by analyzing the timing patterns of regular smartphone usage. No content is collected, no need for wearables. The solution is fully anonymous and privacy preserving. It is based on seven years of research, 20 plus studies, 15 publications and two patents. We offer our solution via SDK to platform partners such as health apps, so they can embed our data into their app. This allows our partners to automatically target those users who need help. In summary, our solution allows personalization, reaching users when they need it, engagement, empowering users along their journey, and reporting, quantifying aggregate health outcomes. Let's collaborate. So these were the five startups that we selected for level one, and we now move to level two, with the first startup in level two being Tune Insight. Well, thanks for selecting us. Thanks for the invitation to this uh, event. We have heard during the whole afternoon, especially in the panel, about the importance of data and the need of data in order to enable the dream of medicine 3.0. And the problem is that we have in order to enable this data transfer or data use, data centralization, due to the regulatory constraints. At Unisight, we enable secure data collaborations to extract collective analytics and machine learning for personal and confidential or regulated data without moving, transferring, or disclosing this data. And this is thanks to a combination of federated learning, federated analytics, homomorphic encryption, secure multiparty computation, differential privacy, that protect the data during the whole life cycle, not only in re at rest and in transit, but also while in use. And this guarantees that no individual patient record, no raw information would ever leave the security perimeter of the hospital or clinic. We are currently deployed at three university hospitals for applications of personalized uh, oncology, so for survival analysis, uh, reference ranges, descriptive statistics, deep learning on medical imaging, and many others. We work with pharma to extract, in a compliant way, real-world evidence from hospital data, and we work also with insurance in order to enable new business models for value-based healthcare in order to reconstruct the patient journey without exposing or leaking the patient data that is so valuable for the hospitals. It's sharing without sharing. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. The next one is a startup that you have already seen during the Future of Health Grant program. It's Nuria. And we are, they were participating in the level one last year. Uh, it's a digital therapeutics target individual health behavior, such as the diet and obesity and different uh, type of things with gamification. Thank you very much, Johannes, for the introduction. So my name is Hugo Nashberg. I'm the CEO, the Chief Operative Officer at Nuria. And we are helping to improve eating habits. As we discussed earlier, it's very hard for people to change their behavior. People that have, for example, diabetes that would need to change the diet, well, they don't really stop easily. Um, because everything that is very palatable and healthy food, we like it a little bit too much. Our brain lights a bulb that is a little bit too big. And in order to change, to stop, you need to have a lot of stressful efforts, and that's why dieting fails. What we do is that we have discovered a way to rewire directly the reward brain system. By doing motor task on a mobile game, people, they see food on the screen, and after this motor task, they like less the unhealthy food that we put on these screens. 
meaning that they lack less reward system is rewarded. They will eat this food less, and thus we can have any overconsumption problem, for example, with diabetes. Everything that we do is science-based. I actually have a full PhD thesis on the subject, and we are continuously publishing new data. Um, at the moment, we are trying to validate our app to a large market to then do a seed round. We are B2B2C, meaning that we sell our licenses to health insurances, to pharmas, to hospitals, that then give the video game back to their uh, users, to their patients. Thank you very much. The last startup that we selected for level two is Minerva. Minerva is helping patients that suffer from diabetic neuropathy to live pain-free and reduce falls. They do that with an innovative, non-invasive solution. And they cannot be here today, unfortunately, but they have also sent us a message. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Greta Preatoni and I'm the CEO of Minerva. I'm sorry I was not able to join you today in this uh, beautiful day of the Future of the Health grant, but I'm happy to tell you in a couple of minutes what we are doing. So first of all, imagine waking up every night in excruciating pain. You stand up to go take your medications, but because you can't perceive your feet, you fall. This is the condition that millions of patients are suffering with diabetic neuropathy have to deal with every day of their life. At Minerva, we developed a revolutionary device for all of these patients. But first, let's understand better the problem. When I talk about diabetes, uh, most of the people think about glucose control and monitoring. But what not a lot of people know is that in 50% of patients suffering with diabetes, which today are more than half a billion in the world, uh, they develop neuropathy. And neuropathy is a damage of the nerves, which causes on one side the complete loss of sensations from the extremities, uh, increasing the risk of injury, falls, and hospitalization. And at the other side, they develop chronic pain, which are typically treated with opioids, which are basically the legal version of heroin. So in the last five years, we've worked at one of the top leading research institutes of the world, ETH Zurich, and we developed a solution for all of these patients. What we do is capturing through pressure uh, sensors uh, the pressure-related information while the patient is walking. This information is then sent to a smart stimulating sock uh, that by activating uh, electrical nerve stimulation in strategic positioning and driven by artificial intelligence algorithms uh, is able to tackle the healthy portion of the nerves, uh, restoring in real time the tactile sensations and uh, to be used as a neuropeace maker for pain decrease. Today we received the support just recently from the Visa Zurich Foundation and we would really like to thank also to the Future of the Health grant for believing in us and we really hope that we will make our dream of improving the life of these millions of patients around the world become a reality. Thank you very much. Last but not least, we come to the level three startups, and it's also a great success story because they have completed the level one and two last year uh, for the grant. Uh, it's ELA, and they have developed uh, a blended psychotherapy platform uh, that enables the continuation of therapy between in-person sessions. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Florence. I'm a psychologist, founder, and CEO of ELA, and yes, we developed this um, um, medical device that accompanies the uh, psychotherapy treatment as usual with this uh, digital application that enables then the patient to apply psychotherapy also between sessions, which is super crucial because our brain works as a muscle when we do psychotherapy, we have to continue training this muscle, not only in the session, but also between. And with this app, we can foster adherence of patient and therefore enhance the effectiveness of treatment while also saving costs in the system. 
So I'm not uh, doing this uh, solution by myself, but uh, together with a very professional team, we're operating from uh, Bern, uh, from the CITEM uh, Insel. And uh, what was very crucial was really uh, to participate from stage one now until stage three in the future of health grant. What we could do in the last year, we built it up our product and also our quality management system within the company, which is crucial as a medical device. We could test now uh, our product with uh, therapists and patients, and we're very happy uh, to be able to enter now stage three, where we have the chance to start a pilot with the uh, CSS health coaches that will test our product to support their patients waiting for a psychotherapy treatment. Next to this, as we also heard uh, this afternoon in, in the panel and, and in the uh, presentations, uh, reimbursement and our business model is key. And that's what is also our focus for the next phase, is to establish um, uh, a reimbursement uh, that supports our uh, product to be introduced in the market. We have uh, good feedback now from the therapists and clinics willing to pay for their part but we also need to manage to find a solution for the patient license, and that's what we uh, tackle in the next uh, stage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all the startups, and congratulations from our side again for being selected. We, from the Future of Health Grant team look very much forward to working with you over the next month and to bring together the expertise of our uh, program partners, of our coaches and the subject matter experts and to really make progress with you over the next few months. Now, we come to the end of this Future of Health Grant conference and I'd like, on behalf of CSS and the APFL Innovation Park, say a big thank you to all the guests that have been here today, to all the speakers, the keynote speakers, the panelists, and to everyone who attended and made this such a fantastic event today. Thank you very much. Also, keep in mind that the nine solutions that you just hear uh, are just a fraction of the, the solution that exists on the market. Um, we have reviewed tons of, uh, of applications for the program. And uh, yeah, we hope that all the healthcare providers, the insurers, the corporates, the startups, they will uh, work uh, as, um, and also the, the, next, uh, the next generation and innovators will work and could join the forces. Uh, to, to disrupt uh, the digital health solution for the prevention uh, in, in medicine for the next years. So yeah, don't hesitate to follow us on the social media now. Uh, there is um, a networking app waiting for you after that. So again, thank you again to all, all of you who attended and thank you also for the partners uh, that are making this event possible. Thank you.